We have with us Divestment Secretary Mr. Neeraj Gupta. Mr. Gupta, thank you so much for speaking to Bloomberg Quint. Mr. Gupta, what is the divestment target that the government has set for the next year? And if you could share the breakup with us in terms of what will be the minority stake sale target and strategic stake sale target for the next year? Targets are whatever given in the budget documents, but the divestment policy remains the same, which includes, which means and include that it will be minority stake sale, strategic sale, listing of the CPSCs and uh, listing of insurance companies and any other company, any other format of divestment including ETF. So the finance minister has also said there will be consolidation of oil PSUs. So what, what is the rationale behind this and what will be the strategy? What, what can we expect from this? See, merger acquisitions and consolidation of business is a very logical, natural business process. If you see in India every year take example of 2016 nearly merger acquisition was 6 lakh crores have taken place in the CPSE space uh, we have to really refocus our attention to it and to that extent the budget gives us a direction that based on the business profile of the company and the financial strength they should look into the options of backward and forward integration of the business this is very logical to really improve and integrate in the whole value chain of the industry to have better valuation of the company and not only that to mitigate risk and give better dividend to the stakeholders so in that very process there has been a suggestion that these opportunity exist in oil and gas sector and logically if you see I have also seen the budget statement that oil and gas sector has uh, upstream companies, midstream companies, downstream companies, and if we can logically have a consolidation. So which companies can we I mean, expect to consolidate? Uh, I have to examine the possibilities and the sector has to examine the possibilities first of all. Mm -hmm. But government will definitely encourage such initiatives by the sectors so that they can not only integrate in the value chain, mitigate the risk across the value chain, but also create economies of the scale with which they can compete anywhere in the world. Okay. So, uh, the finance minister has also said that we have to ensure time bound listing of CPSEs. So, uh, d d uh, are some norms, are some listing norms going to get tweaked so that, uh, so, th so that we can expedite the process of uh, listing of CPSEs? See, listing of the CPSE is very essential to unlock the real values. Those CPSEs which were listed, they were listed more than their book value always most of the time and now if you see in retrospect they have been uh, discovery of many fold increase in the book values keeping that in mind listing the CPSCs of profit making, making CPSCs is very essential to unlock their values and not only to that extent this also give you an opportunity for the people to participate and share the wealth of the CPSCs they give them an opportunity to access the capital market. Once they are listed, they can access the capital market for raising more money. Keeping these aspects in mind, listing the CPSC should be done in all the profit-making CPSCs of reasonably good size. And for that, the budget has given us clear direction that this process has to be completed in time. You have to make a time-bound method of listing the CPSCs. It should not take years to list the CPSCs once you have decided to list the CPSC. Okay. So the further fund offer of the first CPSC ETF has, has received a great response and the finance minister has also said that the second ETF would come out soon. So what, what are you, how much are you targeting to raise from the second ETF? ETF is actually one of the very popular, most popular instrument of uh, investment for retail and institutions both. If you see globally the ETF is AUM and the ETF is in the order of 3.5 trillion dollars but in India it is 35,000 crores only but it is gaining, gaining a lot of uh, acceptability it enjoys the benefit of both the mutual fund and the equity it trades like an equity and the risk is diversified over a basket of equities if you see the last FFO response nearly 41% of the total ticket size was cornered by the retail 2.7 lakh retail investors below 2 lakhs 
applied for getting the ETFs allotted to them, ETF units allotted to them. Keeping that in mind, government is committed to bring out one more diversified ETF consisting of the CPSCs and government investments in other companies. Uh, and this will be one of the modes of divestment next year. So will the constituents of the uh, ETF be more diversified because uh, in the first ETF we saw a major chunk of the uh, major weightage of oil and gas companies. Definitely so will, will, we, will we see that? Definitely the second ETF will be different from the first ETF because first ETF is already in place. So second will be hopefully more diversified. The real controls will be known to you once we have taken decision on it. Sir, so call, uh, call me a skeptic, but in the last few years, the government has always missed its divestment target. And this year, the, the target has been set at around 72,500 crore. That, that is what we learn. So, what do you see this as a challenge and what will you, uh, uh, how will you ensure that this target is met? met? Targets are uh, always set as a challenge and it is the best endeavor of the department to achieve these targets. We have been doing pretty well this year. We have already reached 31,000 crore out of 11 divestment initiatives. If you see the track, we had been on an average making six divestments per year and average had been 21,000 crores. So we have already made 11 and, and the year is not yet over. So what I'm trying to say is targets are there but a lot of new focus initiatives have come into place. The listing of the companies, listing of insurance companies, consolidation of the companies, then ETF and various other methods which are permissible for divestment have been used this year. So I am sure with best effort, the department will try to achieve the targets. And so the government has gone slow on strategic disinvestment uh, the, la the, the current year. So what is, is that the reason that the strategic uh, divestment for the next year has been reduced? And, and what, what, will you, what can we expect from you in terms of overcoming this uh, uh, the, so that basically you are able to achieve the strategic stake sale target? Obviously this year you are divesting your 51% well, stake uh, in Pawan well, Hans. First of all, I like so to correct, we have never slowed on a strategic divestment uh, uh, process. And the process has to be done most meticulously, most transparently. And that is what we are doing. Uh, it, has ha it has to be a process out of which the real achievement will be visible. So probably you are talking about the real achievements not being visible immediately. Okay. But uh, I have trust we are on track. Okay. And so uh, what, what can we expect uh, in terms of divestment in the current financial year? Uh, there were media reports saying that uh, you would divest take in ITDC. So what, what, what is your uh, strategy for the next uh, well, two, two months? Specific output, uh, very specific indications of what will be divested is not prudent. Mm -hmm. See, divestment is done in a process which is most transparent and which is to be done in the market conditions which are unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So we will do divestments at the right time in a prudent manner. That is what I can tell you. I may not be able to specifically tell you which company I can divest and I will be divested. So. Right. And, and sir, uh, Niti Aayog was assisting you with divestments the last year. So will we see that continuing the, uh, the next year as well? Will Niti Aayog be advising you as on divestments per, in the next year? As per the strategic divestment policy, Niti Aayog was supposed to give us the first suggestion on the basis of which we were supposed to take the decision of the government. So they are advisory for initiating the divestment, strategic divestment process and as per the policy that role continues. Okay. And sir, you are also heading a committee uh, to promote uh, digital economy. So, so what, are, what are the findings of this and what, what can we expect in terms of uh, digitizing all the transactions that happen in the country? See, government is committed to create digital and cashless transaction society and not today. The decisions were taken, 19 decisions were taken in the cabinet by February 2016. This national task force was implementing these decisions and now this has really generated a lot of acceptance of digital transaction methods. Now people have started realizing and this is getting expanded. There is nearly 300% increase 
in the number of transactions since 8th of November itself. Keeping that in mind, the government gives importance to the national uh, to the backend digital transaction infrastructure that has to be revamped or is, that has to be really optimized. We have to really expand our digital payment acceptance infrastructure. Then keeping in mind the socioeconomic profile of our country, we have to come out more and more methods which are easier to operate for making digital transaction. There is a reference to Bhim, which has become very, very popular. And there is a reference to Aadhaar Pay. With your Aadhaar, you can pay and receive the payments. Now, MDR charges has to be rationalized. They are getting rationalized as the volumes are increasing. Mm -hmm. And cyber security issues have also been uh, mentioned. That we are very conscious to ensure that the digital payment ecosystem is secured from cyber attacks.